Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe yes. and uh, that you are able to receive this content fresh in your inbox every week. So good to have you with us. And uh, today we're talking with Mattis Thielman from Leaps. Ig. Leipzig. Leipzig, I'm sorry. It's a difficult. Man. Yeah, yeah, Leipzig in Germany. Yes. Uh, he and his wife Marie have uh, had a church here for how long, Mattis? Five years now. Yeah. Just hitting hitting the six, six years mark now. Okay. Well, so good to meet you and uh, to be with you in your city. And uh, you've been here for six years. Where were you before that? So we, we did college in Australia, Oxford Falls, been there three years, did the full experience. And then we traveled back to West Germany, close to Frankfurt. And we were pastoring a small Baptist church there. We, we just came in there, just helped out. And then it ended up that we own staff and we see we just see revival from 20 people when we started to 200 people on a good Sunday in a little village. But then God just had put us pushed on our heart to plant church and so that's how we ended up here and you decided you go from the baptist to become a c3 yes <laughs> yes to become a C3. oh it happened because of the connection of college because we felt with c3 with the whole culture identity with the family why we we fell in love with it so even when we came here pam borrow made us a contact with pastor sam mcintyre right, who was right. running europe by that time right and so we we still been in the loop and now we knew if we ever plan a church it has to be c3 church because it was a family that's brilliant now you got four kids two <laughs> <laughs> two? Four, four? No, we do. We do yeah. have four kids. We do. We do. Yeah. So uh, your oldest is thirteen, nearly, and your youngest is one. And he's nearly one. Yes. Big, big gap. Thirteen to one. Although we had a similar uh, situation, and we were so delighted when our third child came along. Yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes there are you know surprises. They are. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but what a delight. Oh, it is. It I is. was ecstatic when I knew Chris was pregnant. We hadn't planned it, but yeah. uh, it was with our, with our third child, Joseph, who's, you know, just uh, such a delight to us today. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, so tell me about your children. You, it, boys, girls? We have one, one girl, yeah. Maya. She's the oldest. And then three boys, Matteo. Malta and Mats. Okay, so I'm praying for your wife right now. Uh, yeah, you do pray, then. <laughs> pray for her. Pray for her. How have you found uh, a growing church affect you? Has, has it been high pressure or stressful? Actually, yes. So it's, it is stressful for, for a lot of seasons. I feel like whenever you have to stretch out of the shoe you're in, you feel like you, you just fit it. But then growth still happen, and then you have adjust to adjust again. So every time you feel like, oh, now we settle, uh, growth is happening, and it's sometimes stressful because you have to invest in a lot of people, you have to invest in a lot of culture. You always have to remind people what is our culture, what is our DNA, what is our vision. But at the same time, it's so joyful as well, and we try to to teach our team and ourselves. Might be more focused on the positive things. This is what a Chrome Church is bringing, because a Chrome Church is also bringing um, rough discussion or people they feel hurt or bring negativity, and it's so easy to focus on them. But then you have others in your team in your church. They are just loving it. They're just running the game. They're just going every mile with you, and just to refocus every time to those positive things and what God is doing. It's important. Yeah, that's the job of a senior minister because everybody in yeah. the world veers towards the negative. Yes. You can have a hundred positive things going on, one negative mm. that you start obsessing about. Yes. And so I, I just think as leaders, it's our job constantly to keep people focused Definitely. on the vision and, and the positives that are going on. Definitely. And that's what we felt. And this is what I think... Even during COVID and during everything that happened, we, we were always trying to focus with everything we were saying, with everything we were doing, be, be really gospel focused, be community focused, be, be culture driven, Holy Spirit driven. And we felt that this 
was for many many people so refreshing right because the whole everybody was negative the whole right. society everybody was whinging and raging against something and we just tried to come with the attitude of thankfulness every time and perfect. I think this was amazing yeah perfect now well, it's uh, thankfulness definitely is the antidote to complaining yes and uh, complaining, my lord, that just opens the door to every kind of negative force. Everything. The whole family is usually coming with it, isn't yeah. it? Depression, discouragement, yes. all of that, despair. And, uh, and so the need to keep a, a, a mindset in your people that is positive is, is part of the task of every leader, as yeah. we just said. How would you do that? I think... What we do try to do is like in every meeting, in every moment when you are with people, to to have your to have yourself in a positive posture mm -hmm. makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. When people see you as a man leader, negative, whinging, mm -hmm. stressed out or too much, and 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 helping and and being that person makes such a difference. Right. And what we do, we just talk really honest with the team about it. Right. We just had a season with a lot of moving, and it was quite stressful. So we talked about with the with the with the church and with our teams about how painful sometimes stretching can be. Right. But while we're in the stretch, it's our decision. What kind of language do we use? Sure. Are we pulling each other up or are we whinging about the situation? And this was really we try to be really front footed with um we, we mention it, we're targeting it, and also explaining things and saying we think we are too negative with this one. Mm -hmm. I think we could do better mm -hmm. by explaining people a lot. Brilliant. Yeah. If you locate the problem, you can, you got a lot better yeah. chance of solving it. When you misdiagnose a problem, which often the world, you know, all around us keeps doing, saying, oh, you're like this because of that. And the dots don't join at all. No, not at all. And the thing is, I found that often people, you see something in church, you see something in ministry, and you feel, oh, there's a problem, or oh, we should change it, or oh, we. But we don't talk about it. Mm. We, we try to oh, just talk to him and yeah, just talk yeah. to him. And we feel like often it's if you have a meeting with your team, if you have a meeting with, with the volunteer or volunteers meeting, we, we check through that. We're like, hey, this is what we should do right. and also why we should do it. Right. And this helps a lot of people. People are smart. Yeah. And if people get it, they love to anticipate it. Well, I mean, I'm amazed because I've been in Germany now for about a week and a half and in three different churches. And I have found that the German people are very hungry and open to God right now. They are. Very soft-hearted yeah. towards the Lord. Uh, people weeping in meetings and drawing near to God. And I've uh, really been refreshed wow. in my view uh, of, of the nation. And like you say, having those conversations People are way more open to actually hearing how we can Definitely. please God better, how we can do better. And they are more open, I found, for spirituality. Right. Like, like if you think about Germans, yes, we're like oh, always on the head and everything <laughs> you have to think through and amazing in engineering and all of those things. But this is what we see is there's so much hard yeah. happening at the moment. Totally. And people are so open for, for moving in the Holy right. Spirit. We just, we just see a revival with the Holy Spirit. It's we, fantastic. We, we see every week people baptized in the Spirit and because people are just hungry. Yeah. They're just hungry for yeah, something. They yeah, they are. Um, I, we, Chris and I were in a restaurant last night and we were witnessing to a couple there on the next table to us. It was so open, so hungry. And I was going like, wow, wow, this is not like Australia or America, actually, where there's just opposition. Yeah. Often. Uh, but these people are saying, it, it really, and that's how. And we prayed for them. Wow. And so we feel so honored and privileged that you pray for us. And oh, you're amazing. This is, uh, yeah, to bring the presence of God into people's lives. And this is what I found, people looking for real authenticity mm -hmm. they are not looking for the the i don't know the the best right production no they, they're just looking for is it real right is it, is it if they feel your heart yeah i think like oh we just get that because yeah. they are drawn to 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 authenticity for for people not just preaching christ but living christ yeah. for church there that has values and cultures, but you see those. Right. They are not just written on a nice vision board. Right. You see them moving. And so yeah. People are so 
hungry for that. And we even found in, like Leipzig is such a liberal city. Right. And, and East Germany in, in, in general. And even to talk about topics like sexuality right. and, and all of this in church is like where a lot of people feel like, oh, we shouldn't do this. And we try to, let's talk about that. Let's, yeah. let's, let's have, a, have serious about it. Let's be really honest. Right. But be really grateful and not like the f pointy finger. Yes. And people are really appreciating it. Totally. Because they feel like, oh, this is honest. This is raw. Yes. This is authentic. Authentic. Right. Preaching. I'm not just right. words. Just ignoring the problem too, yeah. you know, is it doesn't go away. It doesn't get better no. uh, when you ignore a problem. And, uh, and, and so, Uh, you called your church home, C3 home. Mm -hmm. uh, what's behind that? So we, when, we, when we started, we were C3 Leipzig, and we really liked the lane. But then we ended up having three locations, three different yes. cities. And uh, Leipzig is not like New York City no. or Sydney. Right. Or, so it doesn't work really well, C3 LPZ, whatever. <laughs> so we figured oh, we, we, we would like to have an umbrella name. Right. And then one of the biggest thing for us is this idea of home right like even on on like on when you come in on our flags or whatever it says welcome home but it says it in the dialect of the region we are right. in right and then we feel like oh this is our heart and the vision to reach east germany for jesus um while people finding real home sure. in church sure and then that's where it was like where we're like oh yeah we like the idea of church is home Yeah. And people coming home. And we so know good. it's with a lot of difficulty. It's not just a normal home and right. what it brings. But this is what we really hope, that people find a home and in community. Well, you've got uh, a lot of refugees in Germany. Yes. Right? Uh, and now even more from the Ukraine. But I know your previous president uh, actually encouraged yeah. Germany to take on, I think it was 800,000 yes, refugees. Well, yes, yes. Before the Ukraine war, yes. Right. Like, it was a lot of refugees and was a lot of also debate and in Germany and also a lot of splitting in Germany. Yes. And so there was a lot of people like, oh, this is too much um, or even on a very far right area about, oh, we can't ha have those refugees. They're going to destroy the German culture or whatever. Mm. Then you had a lot of people who were like, oh, we need to help. Mm -hmm. And it was quite difficult to find the middle yes. ground. Yes, but Mrs. Merkel felt like you could do it, didn't she? She felt like Germany, we can do this. Yeah. And you know, actually, I think a lot of people, she had a really bad press because of this Merkel. Mm -hmm. She had really, but there was a part of me that was like, I like that she stood up for something she right. really felt was right. Right. And that, like, there was still a wave of people helping out and, mm -hmm. and organizing things and, mm -hmm. and bringing people in, especially then again when the Ukraine crisis hit. That was big for us because yes. there was trains in Leipzig coming in the middle of the night and, right. and refugees' family came out. So the first task force that was built was the churches here in Leipzig. They were there, they tried mm -hmm. to get them some places safe, feed them and yes. help them. So there was even quite a, quite, quite a lot of good moments for churches to shine. Right. I know a pastor in Uppsala in Sweden who uh, put up water stations and health stations yes. on, the, on the refugee trail yes. and inviting them to church. So when they turned up in Uppsala, they actually just went straight to the church. Yes, yes, yes I heard that. You know him. Yes. Joachim. Yeah, and uh, they, they are doing, they've done all sorts Amazing. of evangelistic things like that to reach out to the refugees, which is a crisis, but there's no point in us just talking about it. I think doing things about it can really help. And yes. I think calling yourself C3 Home can actually help people feel like, okay, there's, there's a place for you here. Yeah. And especially also in the East German mentality. So we're in East Germany, so everything here was once ruled by a communistic system. And I think home meant a lot for people. Yes. They felt, oh, if we talk something wrong to the wrong person, right. somebody will know, somebody right. will spy, right. somebody will, will take. But home was a safe place. and. Beautiful. We feel that so many people appreciate the idea because for many people, they have no idea about churches right. or often a religious, more controversial, now more religious background, more right. old yeah. school churches. 
and for them to feel warmth and the big heart totally. and, and that changes everything. Yeah. Now we're going to do a leadership session tomorrow and I know Chris will, she will move into talking about the big, the big arm, hug. Yes. I'll, I'll be talking about leadership and that. I'm looking forward to being in your church this weekend. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to know why you think it's growing. Why has your church attracted so many like young adults and yes. young families, whereas others maybe have, 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 have not so well done in the, in the COVID time? Oh, it's a good question. I think in the COVID time, for us, the game changer was flexibility. Right. So we try to be f- as flexible as possible. Mm-hmm. So we, we shut down church. We decided on Saturday because everything else went crazy. Or we, can do, we can't do church on Sunday. And then we just organized the filming crew company. And then we just filmed a service. Right. And we had it online on the first shutdown Sunday. And many other churches didn't. So in the beginning, in the first lockdown in Germany, right. we've been for many churches as well. The pastor sent our links around. Yes. We're like, oh, that church is a great online church. Yes. And we just put a lot of effort in it. Right. And we try to be so flexible with everything that happened. I think that helped just to react right. on everything and that helped to gain a, a sense of momentum. Yeah. And we find that really helpful. We, we had a sense of momentum. We never ended up in the discussion about what should we do, what can't we do. We try to have, we, we, we do what we allow to and we try to make the best out of it. But you had the, everybody had the voice. Oh, you do it too much. Oh, you do it too less. This is, and you can't help the middle crop. So we did a lot of that. And, but I also find in general sense, we, we try to, really engage people in the work of the church right. and really help them to not just end up to a nice event, right. but to we're really group focus, okay. connect focus at the moment. Just our connect groups just exploded in the last two months. I Amazing. Think, or 12 months, we doubled them. We have nearly 300 in the last people. Four months. And we have nearly 300 people in groups now. Okay. Um, just to see that and to get people connected, right. get people involved in, in the work of Christ. I think that helps a lot. And just be a young, fun, and vibrant church. Right. Even in the young, fun, vibrant. Yes. That would be your culture, right? Yes. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> what I've seen, what I know about you, young, fun, and vibrant would uh, definitely... And the thing is, it's not only attracting young people. Right. A lot of old people, because right. they found it's so real, it's so authentic. With many people, they're like, oh, I'm coming here because I can bring my grandkids yeah, to church. Sure, that's right. They are they amazing. And old people love being around young people because... Boys them up. Yes. You know, it definitely. gives them new life and they just love seeing young people having a good time. Okay, so bouncing back to something you mentioned about German engineering earlier on. Yes. Today we went to oh, stop it. <laughs> we went to have a motorbike ride uh, with a couple of motorbikes that are one of your good friends in church and, and a cable went <laughs> just bus. ripped apart. Well, to be fair, it was East German engineering, <laughs> so it was a that was a really cold, like oh, like really mock cray motorbike from the East German time. They were really they were cray, but I've never heard of them. No, but Simpson. Yeah, but yeah. Well, so we ended up to just starting it, and then the cable from the from the yeah, it just ripped apart. So we ended up with one. So you drove a little bit around the block. And that's about it. They know we're having the podcast because our crane motorbike. Yeah, because we couldn't hire any, <laughs> any motorbikes. Yes. Yeah, they've, they've all been hired yes. out all around Lindsay. Yeah, so just, if you ever have Pastor Phil and Chris over and plan a motorbike <laughs> trip, just make sure that the motorbikes are working properly. <laughs> That yeah, was good. I even wore my motorbike t-shirt. You, you did. Know, you just, wore your yeah, dog shirt. He was all up and excited, <laughs> you know, and, and raised up the hopes and yeah, so smashing. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, Germany is known for um, a lot of things. It's probably the wealthiest nation in, in Europe. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, it is. Uh, but but you, you, right here in this city, you're growing exceptionally fast. Because I think Porsche 
and um, BMW. BMW, a lot of, and I see Amazon delivery centers, and I think Tesla is not far from oh, here. Just a few hours, yeah, two hours. And they, I mean, so many companies are setting up in the vicinity of this area. So the future is is pretty incredible. And I, th- I think this is, this is the beauty of the city or the whole area, this mm-hmm. whole urban area. It's still considering cheap to live here if you right. compare to other right. places. It's um, really young. You have a great university yeah. here. Yeah. You have a really like even in East Germany when you when you look at the scales about where people are. We have a lot of cities. They are on, on a right wing scale. Right. A lot of young and angry people yeah. living in there. But here in Leipzig, it's more like it's it's more leftish. So right. We have more problems with left and right. <laughs> but um, you have so many young families. So it's actually yes. it's been for many years the fastest growing city, not only in Germany, also in Europe wow. for many years because wow. it's just, because the, the living quality yeah. isn't bad here. So, so my thinking is, okay, so you have a young, fun, vibrant church and you're attracting these young adults. Do, do you think also you're, you're going to find the, these business people and these uh, advanced educated people? advanced educated people are going to find their way into church yes definitely we see that in in one of the other locations that is a little bit more outside more to Chemnitz it's a different town right, city right, right. but there this is the largest location we have and there we see not just a lot of families but we see a lot of business people right young business people entrepreneurs and also creative people yeah. really joining and finding their way in I think it was for us, even quite interesting or quite a learning curve to how to pass to those people. Sure. Because I'm not a businessman. Sure. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a church planner. And before that, I was a nurse. So, yeah. um, but to, to understand their world yeah. and to, to, to see them, to, to recognize, to value them as well. Totally. Because they are not the type of people that are serving every Sunday. No, and uh, well, so a lot of them are not there on Sunday because they're out doing business, yes. and uh, and so learning to uh, understand their rhythms yeah. and uh, how they actually uh, do life is pretty important. I just did a business person's gathering in Amsterdam a couple of days ago with some of Steve Warren's business group, yeah. and uh, they had in a fantastic area where they're going to attract many, many business people. And I've always had a heart for the business community because I think businessmen face trials that not a lot of people understand. Yes, yes. And often they feel very reluctant to talk about their pain or their challenges, uh, their difficulties, uh, because it could jeopardize their position in the company Definitely. and they don't know where to go to. And so they often suffer alone. And uh, so I felt for these guys and also the fact that most churches tended to not celebrate people who were doing well in life. They tended to tolerate them and, yes. and have a kind of a raised eyebrow yes. or a furrowed brow, sort of suspicious or condemning. Uh, about money and wealth, yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So I made sure that we had an environment in C3SYD that celebrated uh, people who were doing well. And so we had some of the top real estate salespeople in the country, in our church. We had uh, Olympic champions. We had uh, people who were doing well in life as well. And then any people who were coming in that were a bit broken, uh, or dysfunctional, or had uh, a, a very challenging background. They had models celebrated so in front of them so that they could aspire to, and uh, and so I always felt that these guys and and I had three different groups. We had the pastors' table, pathfinders, and vision builders. And uh, the pastors' table was the smallest group, and I made sure that I would meet with all those guys. Yeah, and not really talk about business practice, but actually um, bring the God stuff. Yes. As, as one of them said to me, it's crazy. they said, we don't want to know, know about another business meeting. We don't want another uh, business inspiration session. No. Just bring the God stuff. And so we would pray for them and share the word of God with them. And, and they would find wisdom, faith, and strength coming into their life. 
just just in that way. And what I, what we found was so many business people just appreciate that, just mm-hmm. being 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 under your care, and like even mm-hmm. we have some of our business guys in in like running a home group right. or whatever. So we have them in leadership circles as well, and just. They appreciate so much if you talk about leadership principles. Mm-hmm. They know all the leadership yeah, principles yeah. because they have running business yes. and they do them well. Yeah. But they love the connection with with the gospel and for sure. so much. For sure, and we we have so many business people that 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 echoed us like, oh, we, we just took that and brought it in our team and right. and, and doing that totally. with them and because they love the connection with yeah. the gospel and we, we actually have we have a great connection with it we are not running it but we, I love the idea so much there's a business crew around in Leipzig and they do a business breakfast just for um, right. Christians right. prayer breakfast right. where they come once a month and just they share their heart they mm-hmm. share the problems of of their businesses yeah. of people of money and then just, they just pray for each other exactly same way with pastors need yes yeah, just, yeah. And I think, I think, Mattis, uh, it's important to uh, have a smaller group yeah. uh, of business guys that can get together because my, my experience was when there were 10 or 12, they, they would be okay about saying, well, I'm having problems with my teenage boy. Um, you know, my, we, we really hit a snag with our finances this last week. Um, you know, the accountant found some yeah. real yeah. problems. And, but then when the group got to 30, They'd say, oh, you know, the government's passing this legislation, you know, and the contracts are getting more. They'd talk about the marketplace. And when it got, you know, say 100, then nobody's really talking, yeah. uh, unloading their hearts. So I think creating spaces where they can feel it's small enough to just share something that's going to stay within the circle. It's great. Really helps a lot. Yes. It's the same idea with connect groups, isn't it? Yes, it is. Groups. Yes, it is. Bring people small together. Yeah. They take away their masks. Yeah. They start sharing. No doubt. Praying for each other. Yeah. Weeping for each other. It's a lot of that. It's great. Well, I think the C3 home in Leipzig, I, I keep Leipzig. Leipzig, Leipzig. Leipzig, I'm sorry. If you know Leipzig. how the other location cities pronounce, you, you die. <laughs> because it's Leipzig, that's easy. The other one is Limbach Oberfrona. <laughs> and the other one is Ludwigslos Parsi. <laughs> So and I'm having trouble even with Leipzig. And now you know why, yeah, why we yeah. call ourselves C3O. <laughs> because yeah. today it's got too difficult for us. It helps, helps immensely. So yes. Leipzig, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it right every time from here on in. <laughs> Forgive me. Yeah, but uh, it has been really good chatting with you, Thanks. Mattis. And I know without any doubt your church is going to keep flourishing, thriving and growing because uh, you guys are so vibrant yourselves and magnetic in terms of bringing people in. And uh, I think you're relevant to your your context here in such a great way Thank that you. uh, I, I think you, you've got an unstoppable church here. Thank you very much, Pastor. We love to have you here. Amen.